Shout out to G-Man Boxing. Daniel Dubois looks set to be announced as mandatory challenger or will the WBA are set to order Daniel Dubois to face Trevor Bryan for the WBA regular heavyweight title. Now this regular title has really been a complete joke a heavyweight anyway because you literally I mean this title has been kind of a farce for the last for what's it really you've two heavyweight you've two titles for one sanctioned body a regular and a super but for the last few years it's been defended once if memory serves me correctly because Mawel Char won this title I think it was vacant I think it was vacant anyway um against Alexander Ustinov back at the end of 2017 it was the end of 2017 and he didn't fight for a while. I think he had a mandatory... I think he was meant to defend it against Frezza Kendo. And then I think there was issues with drug tests. Or, did one of them fail? Was it Was it Manuel Char who failed? But he was kept on as champion. Or was it the other way around? Was it Frezza Kendo who failed? Either way, that fight didn't happen. So that got dragged out. Manuel Char only recently fought... You know, the summer just gone against one shot himself, Christopher Lovejoy. The, the 19-0 GOAT. Which was best that the, the highlight of that fight was the failed attempt at a backflip from Manuel Char, which was hilarious, by the way. But um, that was that. Uh, that was that was a non-title. He was champion in recess at the time, and then obviously with the regular title, I think it was it was either, yeah, I think Brian was was elevated to full champion despite the fact he hadn't fought since 2018 when he fought BJ Flores, January of last year, 2021. When he fought the is a, a bit of an all kind of all over the shop kind of gig, really bit of a bit of a farce this whole title thing, but um, the WBA were set to order Char versus Brian, but I'm gonna quote Dan Raphael here. Pre source long away to fight between WBA regular heavyweight titles Trevor Bryan and Manuel Char slated for January 29th is off and Char is stripped of his status as title of, of status as recess champion of recess. Char was supposed to produce a P1 V's within 30 days, 30 days of the purse bid and missed the 12, uh, sorry, the 29th of December deadline. I'm told that the card on the, for, on the 29th of January, Don King card in Warren, Ohio, will go ahead as planned with Brian facing Jonathan Goodray, who was scheduled for the undercard in an optional defence. I'm sure he means voluntary defence. The BBA will order... The winner to face Daniel Dubois next. Sound familiar? It certainly does. Because this happened last year. Literally, I think how the card was meant to go. With this Don, And actually, by the way, I'll just touch on this at the end. I'll touch on this now in a sec. But it's a little it's a little kind of um, word of advice to any you know people in the YTBC planning to do any videos on that fight. Um, just from experience. Not, not me, but other guys from last year's card. But how it went last year was was that it was meant to be Stavern versus Lovejoy. That would have been a hell of a that would have been a fun old fight. Stavern would have won that fight. Lovejoy's garbage. Um and then it was meant to be Char versus Brian in the main event. There was issues, I believe, with, with, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was visa issues again for Manuel Char, which meant that he couldn't travel to the States. Um and I think he was saying no, it was issues with Don King, and it looks to be kind of something similar again. But I I do find it amazing that there are fighters on the undercard they're able to just pull them in and i'd i'd never ever and there's journeyman fighters especially heavyweight there's journeyman fighters there's up-and-coming fighters who i would have heard about i have never heard of this jonathan goodry guy never heard of him at all he's 32 years old his alias is the king and he's five foot eleven very short for a heavyweight and very heavy for a short heavyweight too he's been weighing in at 263 250 how does this guy how does this guy qualify for a title shot and in fact actually i'm actually sure wait there a sec i'm sure the wba released heavyweight rankings and they had him rated there wait until i see i want to double check this are these the most recent wba heavyweight rankings that's always a fury you a sec no that's a top 10 yeah, they only have to. They only seem to view full rankings. Yeah, give me the full rankings. 
written. Okay, so it's only giving me the top 10. I was trying to get the top 15 because I'm nearly sure I seen his... Because there was a heavyweight in them rankings who I did not recognise. And I'm nearly sure it was him. No, they got Mark Damari at number 15 still. I mean, amazingly. I don't know how he's still ranked there. But, um, yeah, I've never heard of this Jonathan Goodry guy. I'm really sure I've seen his name, though. I've seen a Jonathan something. Unless it might have been Jonathan Rice, maybe, that was ranked in the top 15 of the WBA. But if he is ranked, then it's amazing that... It's amazing the fact that he's had one fight in two years and is getting a shot at the WBA regular title. It shows WBA really don't give two hoots about that title. And this guy... As I said, he's five foot ten. He's five foot eleven, two hundred and sixty three pounds. I'd never heard of him, and there's reason for that. His last win was an eight round unanimous decision over Randy Moore, or Rodney Moore, I should say, twenty and nineteen. He fought a guy called Aaron Chivas, eight and nine. Corey Phelps, whose name I rings a bell. I'm not sure where exactly I've seen him, but his name definitely does ring a bell. Jermaine Franklin, Trey Lippy Morrison, Ches Witherspoon, Shannon Briggs. Jesus, he's been. <laughs> Tommy Carpensi knocked him out at light heavyweight, Jesus. Maybe that's where I recognise I recognise him from losing to those heavyweights. He fought Aaron Chivas twice actually. Stopped him the second time, went to points with him the first time. Keith Thompson. He's a draw on here with a guy called Keenan Hickman, who was five and one. Career now he's six, seven and one. Recently lost uh Guido oh, he lost to Tashenko. And Guido Villiano, who I do, I, I know him, I know him. And he lost to Kuzman on points. No, he lost to Kuzman by stoppage, actually, sorry, correction. But yeah, this guy has one of the, has a very, very weak, extremely weak. He fought this Henry Harris Tucker guy twice as well. So he is literally just feeding on recycled opponents. So how the hell does this guy qualify for a title shot? Answers on a postcard, please. So he's going to fight Trevor Bryan, who himself has been painfully inactive. Has done. He's he, Trevor was only thirty two. I thought he was older than that. He's still done very little. I mean, he fought Stavern last year, and his next fight will be a year to the day exactly. Before that, he fought BJ Flores in November twenty eighteen. Done absolutely zilch since before since then, and that Don King card is headlined as it stands because with Don King cards, believe me, they are open to change. It's headlined by Alunga Maccabi versus Tabisa Machunu. Yeah. And I think Don King was saying he wanted Canelo with that card to sit ringside. Watch the space with that fight. To be Simichunu versus Lunga Makabu, I wouldn't be surprised if that fight gets pulled. But if it happens, potentially Canelo could fight the winner. Um, Michunu is a tougher test, I think, for Canelo than Makabu, just because different style. But um, listen, there's a little one. For any YouTubers who are planning on doing videos after, if those two fights go ahead, Char and Makabu, this is just a quick one, right? I would advise against doing post-fight reviews because last year when Stavern fought Brian, I was I was thinking of doing a review. I didn't in the end, but Mark Dell, I think Hatman as well had an issue. There was a good few guys who had issues. I remember Dell did a video about it, Blue Collar Sports TV, uh, saying they were all copyrighted. So Don King was copywriting all the little YouTubers, just doing reviews, no footage, just doing reviews. So if there's anyone who's planning on doing that, I would say be wary because this is a Don King Productions card. So Don King, I mean, like, yeah, I, I'd be very wary about doing that, to be honest with you. In terms of Dubois being named as the mandatory for the winner, um, Frank Warren will try and sell that as a legit world title. He will obviously try and milk Daniel like Frank Warren obviously he's invested a lot in Daniel Dubois he really is trying to push Daniel Dubois Dubois has done very little since fighting what's well, he's done very little since the Joe Joyce fight he fought Bogdan Dean he fought on the um Jake Paul KSI or not KSI what was the guy's name Woodley the first fight you know he's not done much since the um since the Joe uh, the well he's not done much since the Joe Joyce fight to be fair the, the as I said the Dean fight then that didn't run out on the KSI card or the Woodley card so I would I would imagine what Frank Warren is going to do is he's probably going to put Dubois in a fight before they call this mandatory whenever they call it and maybe just try and sell it as you know one last fight before his world title shot and then they'll probably do something probably here in the UK in the summer. I mean Frank Warren he has worked with Don King notably in the nineties where Frank Warren was kind of like the right hand man certainly in the UK of Don King. Put a lot of fights on, helped Don King out, and you know he was the guy. He had Nigel Ben, Don King had Jared McClellan. We obviously know for that fight. 
So, yeah, I'd imagine Warren is going to probably try and milk this because, to be honest, I'd pick Daniel Dubois over Trevor Bryan. Trevor Bryan, even, like, the BJ Flores fight, some people looked at him, and at the time, some people thought, look, oh, that was a good win. I was like, no, BJ Flores has never been amazing anyway. You know, he was a small heavyweight, but he was just draining the cruiserweight. And he's done zilch since then. I mean, Stavern. Stavern at this stage, I mean, Stavern was finished after the first Wilder fight. That was in 2015. And he knocked him out in the 11th round in, what, six years later? Over six years? Little, little over six years later. So, yeah, I've never been overly keen on Trevor Bryan. I don't think he's amazing. He's not the right home about. So I would probably pick Daniel Dubois to beat him if and when they announce that mandatory. But, like, that, it. It's not a world title. They will sell it. Like that's what Frank Warren did. And that, that was how that's how Frank Warren got the WBO to be where they are today. Is that his fighters, like a Eubank, like a Ben, you know, Michael Watson, guys like that, they would fight for WB Prince um the same. They would fight for WBO titles back in the nineties when that was still a lesser ranked title. But they would proclaim themselves world champions. Steve Collins is another example. They proclaimed themselves world champion, Joe Calzaghi. And that was how Frank Warren got that WBO title to get elevated gradually, gradually, gradually to the point where they're a legit sanctioned body now. And them with the IBF are two of the more, how do I say it? How do I say it? Kinder sanctioned bodies in terms of their absolute shenanigans. Because the WBA and the WBC are in a world of their own. The two of them are just, it's almost the two of them are trying to outdo themselves. You know, oh, Solomon, you did this. How can I top that? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to announce this guy who's fought once in two years and let him fight and then name him. You know, that sort of way. It's like they're trying to outdo one another where the WBO and the, w and the IBF are like, let's not be like them. Let's let, 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 let's not be like them. Let's, they can do their own thing. Let's be a little bit more integral. They're not, they, obviously, believe me, they're not. They're open to corruption. They have been. I mean, lest we forget the IBF. Remember when David Hay was on the comeback trail and he fought the Maury and Jajai and they had him number three ranked? I think the WBO tried to make a mandatory at one stage as well at that. So they're not, you know, as clean as the driven snow, but they're not as bad as the other two. So, yeah, watch the space. Dubois potentially fighting for a world title in 2022. I'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed the video, peeps. If you could, smash the like button. It really does help your boy out. Help me get to, well, help me get my goals for this year. The goal is 10K. The goal is 10K. We're already at 6,130. So... Let's see if we can do it. The goal is 10K for the year. Hit the like button and help your boy out. For now, I'll talk to you. Peace.